Our tenth visit brings us to one of the strangest of the 17 principles of success because it is the principle which makes it possible for you to convert into an asset every adversity, every disappointment, every defeat, and every failure you meet with from now on the remainder of your life. Yes, the principle of learning from adversity makes it possible for you to transmute all your past failures and mistakes into an asset which will help you achieve outstanding success in the future. At the very outset of this visit, I wish to call your attention to an important fact which may give you immediate possession of the great master key to success, namely, that your positive mental attitude is the only means by which you may convert adversities, defeats, and failures into assets. It seems to have been intended that everyone should experience adversities, defeats, and even failures as a part of nature's method of dis disciplining people to learn how to take possession of their own minds. But the Creator very wisely provided everyone with the means for converting these experiences into benefits of a priceless value, the means being our privilege of maintaining and directing a positive mental attitude. Despite the benefits which we may get from adversities and unpleasant experiences of every nature, no one desires to meet with these experiences. Once you learn that adversities can be made to pay dividends, you will acquire the habit of looking for that seed of an equivalent benefit in each such experience with which you meet. My first illustration concerns a man of whom you may have heard, and I have no doubt you have eaten some of the food which he produced and marketed throughout the nation as a result of an adversity which would have stopped most men cold. The man was Milo C. Jones, who owned a small farm near Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, on which he made only a fair living until he was stricken down with double paralysis which deprived him of every portion of his body except his brain. In this hour of his greatest adversity, Milo C. Jones used his mind, took possession of it for the first time in his life, perhaps, and out of that mind came the idea of raising hogs and converting them into little pig sausage. And on that same farm where previous to that adversity he made only a mere living, he found the seed of an equivalent benefit that compensated him for the loss of the use of his body and lived to see little pig sausage yield him a huge fortune. Isn't it strange that so often people have to be cut down by failure and defeat before they learn that they have minds capable of mastering all of their problems? My next illustration is based on an adversity of a man whom we all know because he was President of the United States and his name was Franklin D. Roosevelt, who was stricken in the prime of his life with polio, which destroyed the use of his legs. Instead of sitting on a street corner with a tin cup and some lead pencils, as many another might have done under similar circumstances, Franklin D. Roosevelt transmuted his affliction into a buildup of his self-reliance and lifted himself to the highest position available to mankind anywhere on this earth got that position and held it until he passed on, held it longer than had any previous president. Verily, I tell you with all the enthusiasm at my command that you may find in your adversities the necessary challenge to inspire you on to success such as you never would have known without these experiences. Right here, may I remind you of the great importance of following the principle of a positive mental attitude because this is the principle you will need most in converting unpleasant experiences into assets. My next illustration involves a very intimate personal experience of my own, which began when my mother passed on. I was eight years of age. I know that the loss of one's mother at any age usually is regarded as an irreparable loss which offers no possible benefits. But even in the loss of loved ones, we may find that there is a seed of an equivalent benefit. I found that seed in one of the most wonderful persons I have ever known when my father brought home my new mother. It was she who inspired me to prepare myself for the opportunity I was to receive later in life when I met Andrew Carnegie and received from him the commission to organize the world's first practical philosophy of personal success. Had it not been for the loss of my mother, I would not now be having this visit with you and my books would not now be serving to help millions of people throughout the world to find their places in life. Nothing is ever so bad or so unpleasant 
that it may not yield some benefit if we keep a positive mental attitude toward the experience and make it a habit to look for that seed of an equivalent benefit. This, of course, involves the application of that important success principle, personal initiative. Now I come to an illustration which involves our great American way of life and all the personal freedom and opportunities we enjoy under our way of life. And it begins with our defeat of the British in 1778. Probably every Britisher believed that the loss of the American colonies was an irreparable loss which offered no possible benefits. Yet you and I know that if we had not defeated the British and made ourselves rich and powerful, the British Empire probably would have been wiped out in World Wars I or II. We know also that although the British Empire survived those two wars, it was our financial help which saved the British from starvation and bankruptcy. So, today, every Britisher should give thanks for the defeat of Lord Cornwallis's armistice, because that defeat finally became the means of survival of the British Empire. My next illustration brings us face to face with an adversity which involves you and I and every other person now living. I have reference to the trend in this and all other countries to rob individuals of their rights of personal freedom, a trend which is in direct violation of the obvious purpose of the Creator to give every individual the privilege of freedom of thought and action. There is something definite you and I can do about this common trend to rob us of our rights of personal freedom. We cannot turn it back entirely by our individual efforts, but we can and we should do something about it where it affects us individually and where we know what we can do and how we can do it. Of course you will ask, what can I do to influence a world trend? And I shall answer by saying there is something definite that you can do. You can refuse to accept this common trend and take full possession of your own mind, thus fulfilling your personal responsibility to your Creator. Remember those two sealed envelopes I mentioned in a previous visit. One of them is labeled riches you may enjoy by taking possession of your own mind. Very well, you have a responsibility to yourself, your loved ones, your Creator, to take possession of your own mind and to direct it to ends of your own choice. This responsibility is yours and no one else can rob you of it or fulfill it for you. You also have a responsibility to your country which has given you our great American way of life. Our great system of free enterprise which is so designed as to provide one with every possible motive for taking possession of his own mind and writing his own ticket in life. It is definitely a part of the overall plan of the universe to give man the benefit only of those blessings he recognizes, embraces, and uses constructively. Tie your arm to your side and take it out of use, and nature rebels immediately by causing the arm to atrophy, wither and become useless. Neglect to keep in contact with your friends and uh, cultivate them, and you lose them. Show indifference to the patrons from whom you earn your living, or the employer who pays your wages, and very soon you find yourself without a market for your services. It is an inevitable law of nature that you lose that which you do not use. And of course this applies to the use of your own mind the same as to everything else. And we who so often boast that we are citizens of the richest, the greatest, and the most powerful nation civilization has yet produced will do well to remember this law through which we lose that which we do not properly use. In this visit, I have brought you what may be a surprise or even a shock by introducing this great principle of profiting by adversity. If you are ready for this principle, you will embrace it at once and never again, as long as you live, will you brood over unpleasant experiences without knowing full well that your efforts could be better employed by searching for that seed of an equivalent benefit which is available in those experiences. Now, before I conclude this visit, I shall give you this assignment, which, if you carry it out sincerely, may well bring you a new birth of opportunity such as you never dreamed of experiencing. Go back into your past experiences, study each adversity and failure you may have experienced, and look for that seed of an equivalent benefit you had not before discovered, 
and you may find yourself richer than you believed yourself to be. And now, until our next visit, just remember, nothing can be called failure until you accept it as such. We come now to the second of the 17 principles which lead to the master key with which you may open the door to the attainment of your definite major purpose in life. Uh, this principle of success is called the master mind principle. I want you to understand the nature of the master mind principle because you must use it before you can take possession of the master key. An understandable definition of the master mind is this. It consists of two or more people who work in perfect harmony for the attainment of a definite purpose. Now, here are some interesting facts about the master mind which uh, give you an idea of how important it is and how necessary that you embrace this principle and make use of it in attaining success in your chosen occupation. First of all, it is the principle through which you may borrow and use the education, the experience, the influence, and perhaps the capital of other people in carrying out your own plans in life. It is the principle through which you can accomplish in one year more than you could accomplish without it in a lifetime if you depended entirely upon your own efforts for success. And I have heard well-informed Bible students say that the first known application of the mastermind was that which existed between the Nazarene and his 12 disciples. Of one fact, I am absolutely sure. When you form a true mastermind alliance with others and uh, work with them in a spirit of perfect harmony, you can draw freely upon the spiritual forces within you in uh, carrying out your plans and desires. I also know that the mastermind principle can give you absolute protection against failure, provided always that your purpose is in using this principle is beneficial to all whom you influence. In my research while organizing the science of success, I had the collaboration of practically every outstanding successful man this country has produced during the past 50 years. And I can tell you definitely that their success was due in the main to their knowledge and application of the mastermind principle. I wish also to call your attention to the fact that our great American way of life and our unmatchable system of free enterprise have been built upon the mastermind principle. The greatest document ever conceived by the mind of man is a perfect example of the mastermind principle in action. It is the declaration of independence and the best evidence of the importance of maintaining perfect harmony in a mastermind alliance may be found in the fact that the 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence knew full well that it might turn out to be either a license of freedom for all mankind or a death warrant which would cause each of the signers to be hanged. Now let us see how the mastermind principle has brought success to people whom we all know. First, uh, consider when Kate Smith began her career as a singer. She had difficulty in earning enough from her singing to pay her living expenses. And she perhaps never would have made her singing pay if she had not discovered and applied the mastermind principle which gave her access to the master key to success when she formed a mastermind alliance with Ted Collins. And according to a report I saw in Reader's Digest, Kate Smith has earned upwards of $30 million and she is still in the upper brackets of income. Two, I remember when Edgar Bergen and that cute little block of wood known as Charlie McCarthy used to play anywhere they could get an engagement. And I rather suspect that often all they got for their services was a meal. Uh, but Edgar Bergen is a smart man in the field of entertainment. So he formed a mastermind alliance which introduced him and Charlie to millions of people by radio and television. And uh, I suspect he is not concerned about money any longer. And you may be surprised when I tell you that the great Ford Industrial Empire started with the formation of a mastermind alliance between Henry Ford and his wife. At the beginning of his career, Henry Ford was shy and lacking in self-confidence. It was Mrs. Ford who inspired Henry Ford with the faith and the courage to go ahead with the perfection of his horseless carriage. Although his uh, relatives and uh, neighbors generally tried to discourage him from wasting his time with the contraption, as they called it. For 
The Federation of States, known as the United States of America, is the richest and the most powerful nation civilization has yet produced. And the secret of our strength and riches consists in our form of government through which all our states function in a spirit of harmony based on the mastermind principle through a central federal government located at Washington. And now a word to you personally. If you work for a salary or wages, you have a marvelous opportunity to promote yourself into a higher income and a more responsible position by forming a mastermind alliance with your associate workers, including the management. In my next visit, I will give you further instructions on how to apply the mastermind principle so as to increase your own income and promote yourself to a higher position with the full cooperation of your management. Yes, that is correct. I will show you how to write your own price tag, fix your own wages, establish your own working hours, and give yourself financial independence. But right now, I want you to do three things before our next visit. First, decide definitely where you wish to be and what you wish to be doing during the next three years. And second, decide how much money you desire to be making and what you are going to do to earn it. And third, Form a mastermind alliance with at least one person in your immediate family and at least one other person among those to whom you are selling your services. By taking these three steps, you will have gone a long way toward appropriating the great master key to success. There is no such thing as something for nothing. Everything, including your personal success, has a price that must be paid. And the only price you are requested to pay for the present is the effort necessary to do three simple things that I have suggested. Now, before you begin to take the three steps I have suggested, there is one important fact I wish to you to remember, and it is this. Control your mental attitude and make yourself friendly and agreeable with everyone with whom you are closely associated uh, if you expect friendly cooperation in return. Indifference cannot create a mastermind alliance for you. A negative mental attitude can bring you nothing but failure. Remember always, you are where you are and what you are because of your mental attitude in which you relate yourself to other people. Remember also, your mental attitude is the one and the only thing over which you have complete control. Success is something which has to be planned. And success is something which has to be earned in advance. True, there is such a thing as luck, but just remember that luck is something you can create for yourself if you know the rules and follow them just as I give them to you. Remember, too, that success in the higher brackets of achievement is something that can be had only by taking others along with you. And the best definition of success, which I know, is this. Success is the knowledge with which to get whatever you want from life without violating the rights of others and by helping others to acquire it. Uh, there is a known formula for the attainment of success, and it is as definite and certain as are the rules of mathematics or the principles of science. My purpose in these visits is to bring you that formula in simple terms that you can understand and apply but I can never give you that for which you are not ready. If you are ready to advance into the higher brackets of success, uh, you will recognize this fact by your willingness to follow the simple instructions I shall give you as we go along. If Kate Smith had not been ready for success when she formed a mastermind alliance with Ted Collins, he couldn't have brought her success. Uh, this thing called success is a very profound and interesting thing because the, the line of demarcation between success and failure is so slight that it is often hard to tell where one ends and the other begins. Uh, for example, in my association with the late Henry Ford, I recognize that he had thousands of people working for him who had much more education than he, more magnetic personalities, more ability to make friends, and a much better chance of succeeding than Mr. Ford had when he was working for wages. But Mr. Ford had one simple quality the others who worked for him uh, did not possess. The same quality I will clearly describe for you in my future visits with you. Meanwhile, I would be interested in knowing if you can describe this one simple quality Henry Ford possessed, which made him the greatest industrialist this nation has ever produced. In my next visit, I will give you a definite clue as to the success quality which helped Henry Ford spread his influence throughout the world and make himself richer than Creasus, despite the fact that he had only a meager common school education. 
Until then, please be of good cheer, will you? And just remember that your only real limitation is the one you accept and set up in your own mind. Well, this, our third visit, brings us to the success principle which has marked the turning point of every person who has promoted himself or herself from the lower brackets of success to the higher planes of achievement where one acquires everything he desires. This principle is called the habit of going the extra mile, which means the habit of rendering more service and better service than one is expected to render and doing it in a positive mental attitude. I'm going to tell you all I know about this magic principle of self-advancement because it is uh, the one rule you must follow if you expect to write your own price tag and be sure of getting it. Uh, let me describe this success principle for you in a brief formula which you can easily remember. I call it the QQMA formula, which means the quality of service you render plus the quantity of service you render plus the mental attitude in which you render service determines the space you occupy in your chosen calling and the compensation you get from your services. If you will examine carefully the uh, people whom you know to be unusually successful, you will discover that they follow the QQMA formula, although they may do so unconsciously. Now, I wish to give you a big advantage over those who follow this formula unconsciously. I wish to show you how to make use of it deliberately with purpose of forethought, so you may make the principle pay off in a big way and do it quickly. Uh, now I shall tell you some of the benefits you will enjoy by following the habit of going the extra mile. One, this habit will bring you to the favorable attention of those who can and will provide you with opportunities to promote yourself into a better circumstance. Two, it will place back of you that great natural law of increasing returns through which the service you render will bring back greater than average compensations. And three, following this habit will make you indispensable in your chosen occupation or calling. Therefore, it will place you in a position to write your own ticket. And four, this habit will help you to excel in your line of work because each time you render service, you endeavor to do a better job than you did previously. And five, if you work for a salary or wages, this habit will give you preference when work is slack and others are laid off. And six, it will help you to benefit by the law of contrast because the others around you will not be going the first mile, let alone the second mile. And seven, following this habit of doing your very best in all of your efforts and doing it in a pleasing mental attitude will improve your personality and uh, make you liked by others. And eight, it will also help you to develop a keen, alert imagination because you will be continuously seeking new and better ways of rendering useful service. Nine, it will inspire you to move on your own personal initiative instead of waiting to be told what to do, a habit which is the first step in leadership in all callings. The habit of going the extra mile definitely develops greater self-reliance and gives one more courage to move ahead without the fear of criticism from others. And here is one thing it does, which, uh, if it benefited you in no other way, would justify you in adopting it. It helps you to master the destructive habit of procrastination, the one habit which heads the list of causes of failure. Twelve. Going the extra mile influences other people to respect your integrity and inspires them to go out of their way to cooperate with you in a friendly spirit. And 13, the habit helps you to develop definiteness of purpose, which is the starting point of all personal success. And it stops you from drifting through life without knowing what you want or where you are going. And number 14, and here is the grand payoff which this habit gives you. It provides you with the one and only excuse for asking for a promotion to a better station in life or a higher pay. Obviously, if you are doing no more than you are being paid for, then you are receiving pay for all to which you are entitled. And you have not a single excuse for asking for more pay or a better position. You understand this point and uh, appreciate its significance, do you not? Fifteen... Last but not least, the habit of going the extra mile conditions your mind to maintain a mastermind alliance with others. 
Ever so often I hear people complain about their not receiving favorable breaks in their relations with others. I never hear this sort of complaint from one of my students of the science of success, nor from anyone who has ever read any book that I have written, because all of my students have learned the secret of how to create their own favorable breaks. They do it by following the habit of going the extra mile. I can tell you frankly, I have never received a major favorable break during my entire life that did not come from having applied the principle of going the extra mile. Sometimes I hear people complain also that their positions are such that they are not permitted to go the extra mile. And my counsel to these people is always the same. Change positions and uh, market your services where it pays to go the extra mile. I am sincere in giving this advice because I know that no one can do better than earn a mere living unless and until he begins going the extra mile. During my business career, I suppose I have employed at one time or another at least a score of private secretaries, all of whom followed the habit of going the extra mile. But I have never been able to keep but one of those secretaries for more than a year because invariably they promoted themselves into better paying jobs elsewhere, and they did so with my full blessings. The one exception is my present chief secretary who has been with me for over ten years. I married her to make sure I wouldn't lose her. The reason I know definitely that the habit of going the extra mile is a sound procedure is the fact that I have checked this principle as I did all of the other 16 success principles to make sure they were in harmony with uh, natural laws. I can give you a fine example of how nature forces man to go the extra mile in order that he may produce the food with which to exist. The farmer, for example, must follow the habit of clearing the ground, fencing it, plowing it, and planting the seed at the right season of the year, all of which he must do in advance without compensation of any kind. If he does his part of the work properly, he then hands the job over to nature, sits down and waits for her to do her part, and within a brief period, nature germinates the seed the farmer plants, matures it, and yields back to him the seed he planted, plus perhaps an increase of a hundred times that amount to compensate him for having gone the extra mile. Thus we see that the law of increasing returns comes to the aid of the man who goes the extra mile. And uh, this principle applies the same in rendering service in a job as it does in the fields of a farmer. If the farmer did not follow the habit of going the extra mile, the human race would starve to death in one season. And I am sure you will agree that any time we can copy Mother Nature's habits, we will not go wrong in doing so. You now have a possession of the third principle of personal achievement, which uh, brings you three steps nearer the secret by which you may take possession of the master key to success. In order that you may test the magic power of this third principle, I'm going to offer you a suggestion which... uh, may bring you such overwhelming success that you will not need to attend further visits with me. My suggestion is this. First, start tomorrow in whatever occupation you are engaged to render some form of useful service to someone near you which you are not expected to render and for which you neither expect nor ask for compensation. And two, render this service in a pleasing mental attitude which will show clearly that you enjoy doing it. And three, Follow this practice seven days in succession, and then notice what a changed atmosphere you will enjoy in your association with those nearest you. In carrying out these instructions, do not uh, make known your plan to anyone, but go ahead and do it in the most natural way possible. By the end of the seventh day, you will find yourself so much happier and so much better liked by those around you that you will never desire to give up the habit. Then you will be within easy reach of the supreme secret of success, which comes through the master key to success. In my fourth visit with you, I will give you a very definite clue as to the means by which you may appropriate and use the great master key. And in this same clue, I will introduce you to the source of a form of power which does not recognize the word impossible and helps you to transmute all failures and defeats and all adversities into assets of great benefit to you. And now, until our next visit, may I remind you that if you believe it, you can do it.